We are rolling. We are rolling. Okay. Uh, could you give me your name, please? Angeline M. LaBelle. I'm also known as Angie. And where did you live during World War II? On South Franklin Street, 27 South Franklin Street in Saratoga Springs. And where do you reside today? Today I uh, live at 7 MacArthur Drive in Saratoga Springs. Uh, can you tell me your date of birth? January 13, 1918. And how old were you when the war ended in 1945? 27, I think. 27. About 27. Do you have any memory of the attack on Pearl Harbor? Oh, yes. I remember that, being home, and all of a sudden, just a lot of excitement that we were attacked at Pearl Harbor. And, uh, and then, of course, my mother was concerned because she had three sons. And uh, right now I have, uh, well, I had uh, three brothers and my two brothers, uh, two, three brothers and two son-in-laws, my mother's son-in-laws. And uh, they were all in different, uh, different parts. One was, my oldest brother was in the Aleutians. My second brother was in, um, in Europe. And then my youngest brother was in the Coast Guard in South Carolina. So you certainly answered the question if any of your family members served during World War II. Oh, yes. Um, how did you receive information during the war? Did you listen to the radio? Yes, mostly the radio, and, uh, and, and of course the newspaper, that's where we got our information from. I, uh, and I remember the mailman used to come over to the house, deliver his mail, and my mother was always concerned about her children naturally, and, and, uh, and, and the other members of the family who were in the service. And, and he was there, he was all, Mr. Fennell, I think his name was, the mailman. And he would uh, kind of um, quiet my mother down and he says, if you didn't get any mail, when I make my return to a trip to the post office, I'll make sure, I'll check and see if you got any mail. And if you do, I'll bring it over. He was always concerned. Did you receive letters during the war from servicemen? Oh yes, my brothers always kept in, ch in touch and uh, friends of ours always kept in touch too with my mother. And my mother was always one of those who would be baking and send care packages to them. And, uh, I remember that, you know, being, well, we'll have to get together and do some baking and send it to the boys. Was there any phone communication? No, no. Not with my brothers and all that. And I remember one thing that uh, we were always proud of. There was always a star hung up in the window for anybody that had a serviceman in the service. And that, that star was always displayed in the living room looking out. Do you have any memories of community get-togethers or opportunities when people were talking about the war? Oh yes, I remember I belonged to a group, uh, Frank Simone, who used to be a barber in Saratoga, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, he, um, he was always in charge of uh, raising funds, bonds, for the, uh, for the war effort. And I remember I was on that committee and we would solicit the, um, the groceries and uh, the filling stations and all that and ask them if they would uh, purchase a bond for, for the servicemen. And I, I remember that distinctly. 
Um, if we're going to talk about doing without or doing with less, uh, do you remember uh, any incidents with food rationing? Well, I, mother, I remember everybody trading their stamp. They would have books of stamps, and they would trade one thing for another. If they needed more sugar or more flour, they would trade that way. Do you have any memories of the gasoline rationing? Not too much of that. Any uh, conversation about the concern about tires and tire rationing or tire certificates? No, because I think my, my brothers were all in the service and my, the in-laws were in the service too, <coughs> excuse me, and we didn't drive. So it was uh, our, the only way we went, walked. Were you concerned about a shortage of shoes or clothing oh, shoes, or nylons? Especially shoes because I was working in the office of the Children's Corps. And uh, at that time, and of course I was always conscious of shoes, wearing shoes. And uh, I would always, uh, there was a, a family of uh, two, or two sisters that lived, that worked the county building. One worked in the county treasurer's office. The, the other one worked in the county auditor's office. And they always had <laughs> had uh, rations for shoes. And I would always ask them for a ration so I could buy my shoes for Easter <laughs> Sunday or something like that. And they were very generous about giving me their rations. I remember that. What can you tell me about the children's corps? Well, at that time, at that time, I started working for the uh, Edward Kelly, who was an attorney, and he was always clerk of the Children's Court. And eventually, uh, the, uh, there's so uh, so many people that were affected by the war that instead of working for the child, uh, for Edward Kelly, attorney, who was the clerk of the Children's Court, I started to work for the um, Children's Court because our, our, our cases really loaded up then because we had more people separated from their families that had to serve. And, uh, and uh, so there was a lot a big influence uh, of the children. Where so, was the Children's Corps located? On the, uh, the county building on the, Grand, uh, on um, Lake Avenue, across the street from the uh, Price Chopper, they'd have the um, the children's court there. That used to be the county building. What kinds of services or uh, support did you give children and families? Well, sometimes we had to give financial support and. Uh, because the the, um, the breadwinner had to serve, so and we had to do that. And like a lot of, in some cases, I don't say a lot of cases, the children would go to uh, boarding homes or something, and we had to supply them for that. Were there boarding homes here in the city? I think just outside the ch the city. Who would be managing the boarding home for children? Would it be a family or? It would be a family, a family uh, oriented uh, pl place where uh, one or two children could be cared for. That's a whole new subject for me. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, you were all through with school and oh. you were working. Yes. Did the war change any of your training, your work? You, I guess you went from being a lawyer, with a lawyer's office to this particular job. That's right. Now, I know you per uh, participated in the purchase of war stamps and war bonds. Yes. And any social events they would have, we would participate in them, you know. But was mostly trying to get to, to raise funds, bonds, for the men's service. 
What kinds of social events did you go to? Well, what would be the clubs that, that I belong to? There would be the Italian American Club, and the, uh, what was it? In later years, it would be the Children's uh, Children's Corps, and uh, we would participate in anything like that, anything for the serviceman. If he was called home, you know, on the furloughs, furloughs, and, and, and things like that. Yes, but there was anything here. Was there anything here at the museum, at the armory? Oh yes, they used to have basketball games here. And I remember uh, they used to have skating here. And this was an active place, just like City Hall was. I've also seen pictures of a, a lot of civic work going on at the arcade. Do you remember anything in that building? In the arcade? Not so much. Okay. Do you remember blackout curtains? Oh yes. They would. They would be whenever there. There seemed to be a fret or something, a, a, a scare. The black curtains would go up. Do you remember the air raid drills? Oh yes. That there was like a a, a community effort. People in the community would participate in that. You know, warning people to stay off the streets and things like that. How were the holidays different because of the war? Well, I don't think that there was that much. I think it was just less of a lot of things that we wanted and we couldn't get. Uh, I've seen pictures of people receiving nurses training. Was oh, yes, there was a lot of that. And uh, um, what was it? I know uh, my sister-in-law used to do uh, uh, bandages and all that, ra uh, wrapping. Uh, that was Frank Simone's sister, Liz, and she used to do, band do bandages and all that thing. What's your biggest memory of your mom during the war? My mom, uh, baking and getting the, uh, and um, getting things for the men in service, my brothers especially. She would always be baking, and that's why, like, she would always trade off something that one of the ration things for either sugar or, or flour. What was your biggest concern during the war? For the safety of my family. I'm sure you weren't alone. Um, does your family have any stories that they share from time to time about the war period? You know, I remember a story. My, I, I don't know if I have any relation to this, relation to this at all, but I remember, I, I think I told you, I worked at Children's Corps and I was getting out of work one fall, fall day, and it was about five o'clock, and that's when Company L, the troop in Saratoga, was going away to the service, and there was an awful lot of catastrophe. I had just gone, gotten out of the building, at the county building, and crossed where, where the price chopper is now, and that used to be the railroad station. And all of a sudden, this train comes in. They were boarding all these soldiers for Company L to go away. And then I guess there was so confusion. And when I came out of the building, all I could see was a big spotlight. And it was the, the headlight on the engine ready to take the troops away. And, and there was a lot of confusion, all the people around. And they, they didn't know where to or turn. And I guess there was no. I don't know what the details were, but there was no warning or something that the train was coming in. So uh, I guess there were, and there was a couple of accidents, and I can't recall what they were. I guess two girls were involved, but I, I, my memory escapes me now. But I remember that. That was very vivid in my mind, and that brought the war very close. Can you remember how you heard that the war was over? I think I was in the uh, 
I was working that time when I heard that it had been over. That's how I remember that. I think I was working in the office then. Was in, was there any adjustment that had to take place when the war was over, when the soldiers came home? Well, there was a lot of adjustment. Everybody was looking for work. <clears throat> Is there anything that you would like to tell me about this period that I haven't asked you about? I know there was a lot of rationing, a lot of trading. One would trade what they, what they had for something they didn't have. I remember my big concern was shoes, <laughs> for some reason or other. I think I just had to be presentable so that. And, uh, I, I can't think of anything else. Were you able to keep your job once the war ended? Oh, yes. Yes, I kept my job right until the time I was married. Thank you. You're quite welcome. <laughs> Could you tell me your name? Joanne Walsh. And where did you live during World War II? In Saratoga. Saratoga Springs. I was born in Saratoga. And where do you live today? In Clifton Park. Clifton Park. How old were you when the war ended in 1945? Seven years old. Do you have any memory of the attack at Pearl Harbor? No. Who in your family served in the military during the war? My father, my three uncles, Aunt Angie's brothers, and uh, um, two uncles uh, by marriage. What did your mom do during the war? She took care of uh, the three children that, that she had. Yeah. She was at home. Yes, I believe. Was Marianne born at that time? Yeah. Yes, yeah, she was at home. Took care of uh, three children. And I remember her doing everything that, uh, you know, the man was around the house and he would be doing, like when the coal was delivered and coming through the window down to the basement. I remember. She was in charge of taking care of all that. And when my father came home, he was in charge of all, you know, taking care of all that and making sure everything was all right. Yeah, so she did a lot of everything that husband or wife would do to take care of the children. How did you receive information during the war? Well, my father used to write letters all the time. Oh, and radio and uh, newspaper. But no TV. No TV. <laughs> Uh, so you were able to read the letters at seven years of age? Well, my mother probably read them to us, or, or I probably, yeah, I could read it at seven years old, read the letters. I remember writing letters to my father and drawing pictures on them all the time. Oh yeah, we always drew pictures and put the X's and the circles on the bottom, yeah. What did you try and draw? What was important to send him as a picture? Oh, I loved, always loved to draw, so I we should just draw, you know, like all kids draw today, you know, two little girls playing, or flowers on the ground, and trees, and that type of thing. Did any of those pictures get, or those letters get saved, and pictures get saved? Yes, I believe, I believe there are a lot of letters. Uh, one of my siblings has them, I'm not sure where, but I think they do have them. Um, there were no phone calls at that time? Uh, not that I remember. No. And how did you get the information from your peers, or what discussion did people of your age talk about? Do you remember? I don't remember the seven-year-olds discussing the war. No, no. Well, if we're talking about doing without or doing with less, mm -hmm. what's the memory of a seven-year-old dealing with doing with less? Mm -hmm. I always felt like I had <laughs> very fortunate child. Yeah. Do you remember anything about the metal collection? Mm, it was probably after the war my father returned, though. It must have been. But I do remember him bringing scrap metal and that type of thing to uh, this place uh, on South Franklin Street in the back, where you could bring the metal and the scraps and things like that and get paid money for that. I remember him doing that, but that was 
Bradley when he returned from the war, I think, when I was older. I'm not sure. Now, where did you go to school at that time? Uh, number one school, Saratoga Springs, yeah. And then later on, I went to around seventh grade, I think it was, I went to uh, St. Peter's Academy and through high school and graduated from St. Peter's. Now, those early school experiences, do you remember any of those? Well, my father uh, had an uncle who he was very, very close to. His name was Uncle Pat. And uh, I do remember, definitely remember, uh, during the winter, uh, I'd, go to, I'd be in school, and when we had to leave school, uh, all the kids had boots to put on. And uh, he, so many times he would show up, Uncle, my Uncle Pat, my father's Uncle Pat, my uncle also, would show up at number one school and help him, I was probably five or six years old, just to help me put my boots on. Yeah, he would, she would show up, help me put my boots on, and then leave, and then the next day he'd come over again. He just wanted to do something to help. <laughs> and I remember that vividly, how nice that was, that he just came over to help <laughs> put my boots on. <laughs> do you remember anything about stamps or the war bonds in your classroom? Was there any discussion then? Mm. I don't remember that, but I do remember we used to, uh, probably many times, brought a little, we had to bring a little shoe box into school and then bring in things to fill that up and send care packages. We would bring in, you know, toothpaste, soap, uh, fill it up, fill it right up as much as we could. And uh, they, the school would take care of sending out the care packages, yeah, to the, to the troops, yeah, I remember that. Do you remember the blackout curtains? Yeah, I remember that also. Yeah, but that's about all I remember. That all of now there's a blackout. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's about all I remember. What's your largest memory of your mom at this time? Well, we used to go down to my grandmother's all the time, and Angie's family, and uh, they're a big, you know, really nice, wonderful, beautiful family, and my grandmother and and Angie and. Um, so we were down there all the time, and I do remember though that you know we probably stayed for for hours because we had you know our siblings to play with and cousins to play with, and uh, you now I, I, I still remember vividly it would be after dark. My mother would have Marianne in the stroller, and Rosemary would my other my older sister Rosemary would be holding onto one side of the stroller. I'd be holding onto the other side of the stroller, and I remember the exact route up up South Franklin. You take a left, you go down Grand Avenue because we lived on Grand Avenue. And she would kind of be, I remember her rushing because it was after dark, probably. So I don't know whether it was rushing because it was after dark or rushing because, well, the kids had to get to bed, you know? Because <laughs> in those days, you really didn't worry about being out in the street after dark. You really didn't have to worry. Um, so it was probably to get the kids home to get, get to bed, yeah. But, uh, yeah. But I remember my mother also helping my grandmother bake. Like, like Aunt Angie said, they did a lot of baking for the to send things out, and um, she was a fantastic baker all her life. Um, did you have any major concerns or worries at that age? Mm, probably, yes. I worried about you know my father's safety, my uncle's safety, yeah. But not, you know, probably was kind of a little more innocent <coughs> at seven years old to be really, you know, really, really understand. Do you have any favorite memory or stories of your family at that time? Well, I do have one very favorite memory of my Uncle Fonzie, uh, her brother. And uh, when he would come home, I mean, he was just a phenomenal person. And uh, <laughs> he always would love to, as soon as he saw us, he would say, okay, now, you know, come over here. We'd sit down next to him, we're on his lap. And he would sing this song that was just bu -bu 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 -bu, you know, rapid fire words. I couldn't even tell you the words because the whole purpose of this song was, of this whole thing was, at the end of the song, like he'd sit there and go on for a few, you know, a few minutes, blah, 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 he'd be singing. And then at the end, our duty was to my, mine or my sister, I, and I loved it. We would have to say, I'm breathless. I'm, I'm breathless. I'm breathless. <laughs> and I remember probably a hundred times listening to couldn't wait, Uncle Fonzie would sing that song and then all we had to do was go, ah, I'm breathless. And he loved it and we loved it. 
<laughs> and this was, he was in the Coast Guard, so this was when he would like come home. <laughs> Do you have any memories of, of what it was like just when the war was over, celebrations or? Yeah, I remember all of a sudden all excitement broke out. Uh, at my, again, we were down to my grandmother's house, Grandma Lambert's, and uh, all, the, every, all of a sudden so much excitement. You know, like yelling and just screaming with excitement. The war is over. And before I knew it, we were all down Broadway. Broadway was just mobbed with people. Everyone just, you know, just poured into Broadway just to celebrate. Just an impromptu celebration. I remember that, yeah. Do you have any memory of the how you had to adapt to things when the war was over? How things changed for you? Mm, no, not really. I don't remember any big adjustment. And is there anything that I haven't asked you that you would want me to know that I should have asked you? Let's see. Oh, I brought a little outline <laughs> of what I was going to. You know, say so because I didn't know you were going to ask, or I didn't know you had specific questions to ask. So I just, in case I wanted to. Um, oh yes, yeah, so there's. Let's see, one. <laughs> yeah, let's see. I'm just looking at my notes. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, um, oh, okay. When. The president died, that was 1945, President yes. Roosevelt, when he died, 1945. Um, I also remember this vividly, um, sitting in, again, at my grandmother's. Uh, we always used to sit around the kitchen table. Everyone was sitting there, that's where we socialized, around the kitchen table. And someone said, uh, oh, and next door was um, an aunt of mine, um, my grandmother's sister, lived next door. And she had, you know, about five children, I think. So, um, one, somebody at the table said, oh, I think his name was Ralphie. Oh, look at Ralphie, he just ran and burst out of the door over ne across the next door. Where is he going? Burst out of the door, ran to the street, you know, the sidewalk. And then we didn't see him because then before we knew it, he was at our, at the door, the kitchen door at my grandmother Lambert's. We're all sitting there. And I do remember, all I remember is him shouting, the president died. President died, and then everyone, you know, just whatever the reaction was after that, I don't remember for sure. But I do remember him coming over. He, that's how we heard. Like him running over and telling us. Yeah. Well, and then, um, and also, uh, when the boys came home, I, I definitely remember, this was a vivid memory also. Again, I'm at my grandmother Lambert's, and. Uh, right directly in front of her house, you know, the sidewalk and the road, but then there was the railroad tracks there at that time. And uh, then beyond that, there was a, a road that goes straight. If you went there today, you walk straight, you go in a straight line, and you wind up uh, St. Peter's Church. Yeah. So apparently, wherever the boys were left off, maybe if they took a bus or a train, I don't know. I don't know how they got to that certain point. But all I know is we were, we knew that like Uncle Beasy was going to uh, arrive home, you know, th this afternoon sometime. So I'll never forget, I would be like out on the sidewalk near the grapevines and all that, playing and couldn't wait to see Uncle Beasy. And, uh, and then uh, all of a sudden, from way in the distance, you'd see my Uncle Beasy in the brown uniform, duffel bag over his shoulder, walking. The, the, the image would get closer and closer and closer and closer. It was just fantastic excitement to see Uncle PZ. It's a great memory. Thank you. You're welcome. Could you tell me your name? My name is Mary Ann Cardillo Fitzgerald. And where do you live today? I live at 26 MacArthur Drive in Saratoga Springs, New York. And where did you live during World War II? 205 Grand Avenue, Saratoga Springs, New York. 
Can you tell me how old you were in 1945? I was two years old. A baby. I was a baby. So you may not have any memories of Pearl Harbor, but do you remember other people talking about that? I don't remember um, from my childhood hearing much about Pearl Harbor because by the time that I came along and could actually remember things, I'm more, it's more 1944 or 45 is where I start remembering. Who in your family served in the military? Well, my father served in the Navy. My mother's brothers all served. And my father's brother-in-law, brothers-in-law, all served. What did your mom do during the war? She maintained our big house on Grand Avenue and took care of my sisters and I um, all by herself you know, in this big house getting up in the middle of the night to keep that furnace going and gardens in the summer with help from uncles and grandfathers. Um, how do you think information was shared about the war, although you may not have many memories of that? Well, you know, as far back as I can remember, I can remember the radio. So, of course, that's primary. And, of course, the newspapers. That was always in our home. But also, as my sister said, the receiving of letters. My mother and father wrote daily to one another. So those letters were always read to the family, and we were always encouraged to, for input back. Of course, I was too young to draw pictures or anything. So therefore, my memories, it's very hard if my memory is really my memory or if it's because I remember people talking about this. But um, also, information was received by telephone because on, when the family did gather together on Sundays down at my grandmother's house um, or on holidays, the, the ones that were in the service, if they had access to a phone, they would call to my grandmother's house. And so, and so people, are, on a Sunday, if someone was able to get through on the telephone, they would talk, and so that information would get in that way about where they were or what they might be doing. There again, it's because I remember hearing about that. Do you have any uh, memory or conversations or little stories about doing without or doing less? Well, I think that um, the doing without and doing uh, less is stories that I heard from my mother. And my mother would say that, um, you know, feeding a family of three children um, uh, was very hard on the rations. But because the family you worked as a cooperative unit. The grandparents, the aunts and uncles that were around, everyone helped one another. So if you were running low on food, you had aunts and uncles, not uncles, you had your aunts and your grandparents um, to help you through because sometimes you would be right down to having nothing but cereal in the house. But they helped one another. So they, the extended family was yes. important. And, and Aunt Angie lived with my grandparents, so there, that was a place that we could always go and be together. And people shared food, and they cooked together and baked together. And that's how they helped one another. Well, you were too young to go to school. Right. So you may not have some of the memories that related to the questions I asked um, the others. Um, do you have any memory at all of the air raid drill or being frightened or scared? No, none whatsoever. Um, when the war was over, how do you think things were different? Do you hear stories about that? Well, um, I only know that based on stories and that my father worked for Metropolitan Life Insurance Company. He was an insurance man and he needed a car for his work. 
during the war they sold the car while dad was away that's my understanding so that when he came back they had to purchase another car so that was a step that he had to to take um, when he got home he had to get back into his business because while he was gone someone else who didn't go to the war took over his accounts as an insurance man so that when he came back that all had to be worked out but he did go back to the same job that he had when he left did you have an immediate bond with your father who'd been gone no it's from from the stories that I hear I was six months old when dad went away to the United States Navy that includes the training and then being out in the Pacific and he was gone for a year and a half when he came home I absolutely did not know him I did not know him at all and I cried at the sight of him and of course it broke his heart but he understood because I was only six months old when he left and I was a year and a half when he came home so the story goes that the only men in town were like the grandfathers and maybe those who for some reason or other could not go in the uh, service but our family all went so I had grandfathers, thank God, and a great uncle. And then um, one of our uncles was injured. Our uncle Danny was injured in World War II, so he came home early. But, so he was about the age of our dad. So I was beginning to talk, and I just called him Daddy. So he was, you know, I had these great father figures. But it didn't take me long to realize when my father came home that he was here to stay and he was my father and we were all very close. Is there anything that I should have asked you that you would like to share with us? Let me see that I would like to share with you. Um, I, I just think, and I think I've already said it and I would just like to say it again. I think the main thing with World War II is that we were all aware, whether it's that I know it by story or by memory, we were all aware that there was a war going on. And everyone obviously made sacrifices. And everyone cooperated with one another. And they were there for one another. And I just think that it's just something that stays with you forever. I know you shared uh, that you had a picture that you might bring. And what picture is that? The one of us with Dad? Well, there's also one of you going... Oh, the birthday picture. One outstanding... Here it is. Then these photos are very, very small. Well, I'm going to use my digital okay. camera to get them. Right. This picture... Actually, I can zoom in on it with the camera. This picture was taken um, in August of, I would say... 1944 or 45 uh, on my father's birthday his birthday was August 15th so my mother made a cake and she put it on our little table and chair set and there's Rosemary our big sister Rosemary there's Joanne and there I am and there's dad's photo in his Navy um, outfit and as you can see I'm going like this Shh because my mother behind the camera is in tears because she missed dad so much. But we still celebrated his, his birthday. And you know, those photos were very important. Dad in his letters said that um, the, the servicemen waited for those photos and they put them in their lockers and they would get up in the morning and they would say, and they would talk to them. They would talk to the images of their loved ones back home. Um, there's another photo that my sister Joanne brought and she gave it to me um, to bring here today and I think we're going to donate this to you if you would like it. This is a photo of dad. I don't know whether it's better for me to put it down because I should. Actually if you, you put it up against okay. you. Okay. 
my um, going from uh, right to left, right when you're looking at it, is Rosemary, who um, was born in 1936. Left, left, left to right. Mm -hmm. Right when here? Left, yeah, when you're looking at it. It's left okay, left to right. right. Rosemary was born in 1938. I'm there no, in the... 36. Oh, 36. I'm getting a little glare. Can you just drop it a little bit? That's perfect. Just okay. like that. Rosemary yeah. was born in 1936. I'm in the little rocking horse, 1943. There's our dad in his sailor outfit. He was born in 1913. And there's Joanne with her sailor hat on, and she was born in 1938. And we're sitting on the steps of 205 Grand Avenue, where we all grew up. Okay. Thank you. And just so that we can, all of us, that are here can that can be represented today. I have a picture of Aunt Angie right here, and she was my godmother. That little baby is me, and that's Aunt Angie, and she, all of her 27 years old. And Uncle Fonzie, Angie's uh, the baby brother of the family. Angie was the, the youngest girl, and Fonzie was the youngest boy of the six. Lambert children. Okay. So that gives you an idea of what we looked like back then. Okay. Do you have any other photos? You oh, we have share? a lot of photos. <laughs> and then, then we'll pull out Aunt Angie's little book. What do you see? All right, we've seen this, we've seen this, we've seen this. Okay, this is a picture of the Cardillo family. Um, Mom and Dad and Rosemary and Joanne and I. This is how we would have looked before Daddy went off to the war. And uh, he went to the war in February of 1944. So that was... Uh, that was uh, when I was a, an infant. Okay, and we saw the birthday and the group. And Aunt, Aunt, okay, now um, this is Joanne, my sister Joanne, and she's thrilled over having a new baby sister. <laughs> and Joanne was the baby for five years until I came along. <laughs> and now here we are um, in Dad's letters. One thing that happened while dad was gone was both of his older daughters received their first Holy Communion. And that was very um, big event to happen while he was gone. So that's Rosemary in her um, Holy Communion outfit. And there's Joanne smiling and proud and she's gonna make hers in, in the next couple of years. And then there's Uncle Danny holding me. And he was the one that he came home early from the service because he was injured during the war and unfortunately we lost him a few years after that but he was the one that i would call daddy practicing to say those words for when my own dad came home and there's dad in his sailor outfit and that's in the backyard at 205 grand avenue with the bear grapevine in the background because we all lived on the west side and we all had great vibes. Okay. Now here, Aunt Angie's brothers, our two uncles, we, you saw Fonzie, her baby brother. These are her two older brothers and these pictures are very hard to see. But I brought them because it shows you the, they're actually in their location for the war. Uncle Scrappy, his name is Dominic Lambert, but Angie's brothers play football, so they had football nicknames. So his nickname was Scrappy Lambert. He's taking a bath in a drum, an oil drum that's cut away to make a bathtub. And he was, was he in Africa no, or Europe? Aleutian, Aleutian Islands. Aleutian. And he's taking a bath. That's actually during the war. And um, Uncle, Joseph Lambert, his nickname was BZ. Where was he stationed? In France. In France. And there he is um, over in France. So that's what we have today. Okay.
Angie, can you hold this up so we can get a picture of this as well? Can you tell me about this? Well, I, I remember going through this uh, years ago, and then I kind of lost track of it until my son came home. My son came home, and then he discovered it. He said, you might be interested in bringing it, you know, to the gathering. So, but it's got recipes in there, and there's, um, uh, I think, I can't see very well, because I have that macular degeneration. Okay. So, I think these are all recipes, oh, aren't they? Well, yeah, over here it says, uh, help win the war. Serve our food supplies, use sugarless recipes, use all your leftovers, and then they have a lot of recipes in there. Did May I Xerox this? this? <laughs> You'll get it back. I'll just take it upstairs and Xerox it. What now? The whole book. Yes, it'll take just a minute. Oh, okay. And it says 1944, the uh, copyright inside. Okay. Yeah, because my son said, be, be sure you bring it back. <laughs> it will come back. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I really enjoyed it very much. Enjoyed talking with you. It was wonderful. I really hope we gave it. you a little insight. <laughs> I think you did a great job. Thank, Thank you. you. Really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.